What's going on, family? This is Scrapbook Boxing Museum of the Forgotten Fistical Series. Sam Lankford's to your right. He's my number one greatest fighter of all times. Harry Greb is to your left. He's my number two greatest fighter of all times. These two men would face each other. And a six round no decision, undisclosed location, not recorded in the history books. Harry Greb would have 18 fights with past and present champions. He would face Billy Mitch January 12, 1915, September 21st. He would have a no decision in 10 rounds. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. March 31st, 10 rounds, no decision. Face him three times. Billy Misk was some fighter. Type in scrapbook boxing, Billy Misk. And I go into his full detailed information on a profile that was done on Billy Misk. He would wind up dying of bright disease, liver failure, and kidney disease. And the thing about Billy Misk, he had to fight one more fight with Billy Brennan. So he can get $2,400 to give his family the best Christmas gift possible. He would go into the hospital the following morning and eventually die in the hospital. Harry Greb would face Faze Kaiser seven separate occasions. He would defeat him twice, 1914. He would have a no decision in six rounds. Face him three times in 1915. Two six round no decisions and one 10 round no decision. He defeat him in 10 rounds in 1916. In January 29th, 1917, he would defeat him in 20 rounds. Harry Greb would be Faye Kaiser's first professional fight. Harry Greb would find himself in the ring with Jeff Smith. Seven separate occasions. September 11th, 1917, 10-round no decision. May 19th, 1917, in Buffalo, New York, 10-round no decision. December 25th, 1920, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, 10-round no decision. And February 25th, May 20th, 1921. Greg would be in the ring with Tiger Flowers, the Georgia Deacon. They would face each other three times. One no decision and two losses against the Georgia Deacon, Tiger Flowers. Tiger Flowers was the first black middleweight champion in boxing history. Harry Greb would find himself in the ring with five middleweight champions and he would defeat them. Michael Dowd. Who would become middleweight champion when he took the title away from Al McCoy? He would lose that title from a very, very good fighter by the name of Johnny Wilson. Johnny Wilson was from Harlem, New York. He was a southpaw. And he would defeat Mike O'Dowd. Defeat him in 1920. And he would lose the title himself, 1923, to the great Harry Greb. Greb would also defeat George Chip. Now, George Chip had a brother by the name of Joe Chip. Harry Greb lost two fights by knockout. One of them was to Joe Chip, George Chip, his brother. George, George Chip took the title away from Frank Klaus. And George Chip was a very good fighter. Harry Greb would also defeat Al McCoy. He would defeat Mickey Walker, the toy bulldog from Elizabeth, New Jersey. Mickey Walker was a welterweight and middleweight champion. Now, Mickey Walker would take the title away from a fighter by the name of Jack Britton. He would lose it to Pete Lazzo, get it back from Lazzo, and then relinquish the title to move up and wait the challenge for the middleweight championship belt. He would face Harry Greb. Lose to Harry Greb, but he would take the title away from Tiger Flowers. Mickey Walker is an outstanding fighter. He'd be in the ring with Jack Sharkey and Max Smelling and Tommy Lockwood. You name him, he fought him. Harry Greb would also face Johnny Wilson, 1923. He would take the middleweight championship strap away from Johnny Wilson. Harry Greb would also face five middleweight claimants. Mike Gibbons out of St. Paul. 
Frank Mantel, Eddie McCarthy, Jeff Smith, and Brian Downey. Fed would defeat seven light heavyweight champions. Jack Dillon, they called him the Giant Slayer. Battling Levinsky, Mike Mateague. Now, Mike Mateague took the title away from battling Siki. In Ireland, on St. Patrick's Day, Mike Mateague was Irish. Greg would also face Tommy Lockman. He's in my top five greatest light heavyweight champions of all times. They called Tommy Lockman a Philly Phantom. He's an outstanding fighter. He would get a title shot against Primo Cornera. And he would lose to Primo Cornera. Greg would also find himself in a ring with Jimmy Slattery. Jimmy Slattery had an outstanding fight with Dave Shade. Put him in Buffalo in his hometown. Harry Greg would also find himself in a ring with Maxie Rosenblum. One of the greatest records in light heavyweight championship history. But Archie Moore would have a greater record than Maxie Rosenblum. And Archie Moore will hold the most lightweights and uh, knockouts in boxing history. The most light heavyweight championship rounds. I mean, Archie Moore would have all kind of records. Maxie Rosenblum was a hell of a fighter. Greb was in the ring with Gene Tunney five separate occasions, defeating him in 1922, taking his American light heavyweight championship belt away from him. In my estimation, Greb had defeated Gene Tunney three separate occasions, losing two. But he would win one and lose four with Gene Tunney. Harry Greb knocked out heavyweight Gunboat Smith and won astonishing round. Greb defeated light heavyweight champion George Compartier. He defeated St. Paul heavyweight Tommy Gibbons, who was the younger brother of Mike Gibbons. So he would face both Gibbons brothers. He would defeat a heavyweight by the name of K.O. Brennan. His name was Bill K. O'Bunning. I mean, I got to tell you, Harry Greb was some fighter. Now, when Harry Greb faced Mickey Walker, fought him in 1925. And he fought him in New York. And after that fight, these two men will go to a bar and Mickey Walker would keep heckling Harry Greb about the fact that he really defeated him. And Greb said, if you want to try it again, we can take it outside. And when Harry Greb went outside to take his jacket off, Mickey Walker had snuffed him in the back of the head. He got him on the ground. He was pounding him in the back of the head consistently until it was broken up. Now, Harry Greb was stopped by two men, as I stated. Joe Chet. He was stopped in two rounds. And as I said, he was the brother of George Chip, defeated Frank Klaus. The other fighter was against Kit Graves. Harry Greb couldn't continue because of a broken bone in his hand. But he would lose to Kit Graves a second time, but then he would defeat Kit Graves. He would face Kit Norfolk. 1919, 1921. Accidental thumbing of Kid Norfolk into the eye of Harry Greb would cause Harry Greb to have 47 more bouts blind in one eye. And this was before he would defeat Gene Tunney in 1922. Incredible. 1923. He would defeat Johnny Wilson. And he would defeat him in a rematch. Like I said, he fought the Georgia Deacon, Tiger Flowers, three separate occasions. 
He was a remarkable fighter. It was Harry Gregg. 1917, 1919. Unbelievable years for Harry Gregg. I mean, you're talking 46 fights. Gregg would die on the operating table for an eye procedure. And ironically, Tiger Flowers, the following year, would suffer the exact same procedure. And he would die on that table the exact same way. As for Sam Langford, I mean, where do I begin with Sam Langford? For Tiger Flowers, August 21st, 1924. And Fremont, Ohio. Ten rounds, new decision. February 26th, New York's Madison Square Garden. We're losing 15 rounds. August 19th, 1926, New York, Madison Square Garden. Tiger Flowers will once again lose in 15 rounds. Philadelphia Jack O'Brien, August 15th, 1911. New York's Madison Square Garden. He would defeat him by TKO. But unfortunately for Sam Lankford, title was not on the line because Philadelphia Jack O'Brien said so. He'd be in a ring with Joe Walcott, the Barbados Demon, September 5th. Manchester. Defeat him in 15 rounds. 1904. But they called it a draw. So the title would remain around the waist of the Barbados demon, Joe Walcott. Find himself in a ring with Joe Gans. Now, with that Walcott fight, there's a lot of protests going on because everyone knew that Sam Langford had won that fight. With Joe Gans, it was a different story. Sam Langford was told that he didn't have to make weight. And the title would be on the line. But he'd be overweight on the day of the fight. There'd be a scale waiting there. And because he didn't make weight, it would be a non-title fight. But he would defeat Joe Gans. Incredible. Fought him December 8th in Boston, Massachusetts. He defeated him in 10 rounds. Now, just a few days before that, three days before that, he was in a ring in Philadelphia. I mean, this is incredible stuff here. Sam Langford walked in overweight. For that reason... The title was not on the line. He'd be in the ring with Stanley Ketchel, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, six final decision, April 27th, 1910. And never received an opportunity for a rematch with Stanley Ketchel because Stanley Ketchel was shot by Walter Dipley. For colored champions such as Jack Johnson, fought him in 1906. He would lose to Jack Johnson. Lee Anderson who's a color light heavyweight champion. Lee Anderson would face fighters such as Kid Norford, Alabama Kid. He would face Harry Wells 22 times, Sam McVeigh three times. He faced Joe Jeanette 14 times. And Joe Jeanette would face Jack Johnson 10 times and Jeff Clark 11 times. What a quality fighter Joe Jeanette was. Be in the ring with Bob Armstrong. Armstrong would be in the ring with Joe Chowensky and Fred Morris, Frank Charles, Joe Butler, and Denver Ed Martin. Denver Ed Martin would lose his title to Jack Johnson in 1903. Bob Armstrong would also defeat George Cole. Sam Langford would find himself in the ring with Frank Craig to Harlem Coffee Cooler. Black fighters that Sam Langford would be in the ring with. 
Aaron Brown, who's known as the Dixie Kid. September 28th, 1909, Boston, Massachusetts. He would stop him in five rounds. For him, January 10th, 1910, Memphis, Tennessee. And he knocked him out in three rounds. But a controversy with Dixie Kid. And he'd be in a ring with Joe Walcott. And the referee was Duck O'Sullivan. And he would bet on Dixie Kid. So Walcott would get his title back. Langford would also find himself in a ring with Belford Walcott. July 16th. Rhode Island. We defeat him in 20 rounds. Jeff Clark, the Joplin Ghost. John Lester Johnson, Dave Holly. Jack Blackburn, six fights. Jack Thompson. Blackford Simmons, they call them Kid Monday. Big Bell Tate, young Peter Jackson, Larry Temple. Being in a ring with Fireman Jim Flynn, three separate occasions. February 8th, Los Angeles, California. No decision in 10 rounds. March 17th, 1910. Vernon. They would knock him out eight rounds. Ed Gunbo Smith and Bill Lang. Tom Bearcat Wright. Dan Porky Flynn. A fight that should have taken place. Harry Greb. Sam Lankford. For a world title. What that would have been. Thanks for hanging in there with me. I'm Scrapbook Boxing. Museum of the Forgotten Fisticuff Series. All great fights and all great fighters will never be forgotten on my channel. By the way, both Harry Gregg, Sam Langford, had asked both Gene Tunney, Jack Dempsey, for a title shot. And they were both rejected.